Welcome to Now, I'm your host, Curtis Parody, bringing you the news happening in the world right now. So, what's happening on this amazing Wednesday? Well, first, let's talk about a story that involves my favorite childhood toy, Legos. Yes, the amazing toy that inspires creativity and independence. Because yes, of course, you can like take the set and you can build the set if you wish. Or, of course, you can take those blocks and build something totally different. Something that's all your design. Something maybe like this? Check it out. Nothing says Legos are awesome like using them and some computers to create an awesome Lego rock band. An Italian music producer decided to take some of those awesome Bionicle Lego men, added some simple motors, and wired it all together to his iPad, and boom! Now you've got yourself a Lego rock band. What this allows him to do is actually lay down a beat on the iPad, then the mini Lego robots will tap it out on the various devices. So far, the so-called Te Mata band is able to do a few different cover songs, but they also have a few original tracks up their robotic sleeves. When I look at this more and more, there is only one thing that comes to my mind. What if the robots were bigger? And I don't mean like human size, because that's just freaking boring. I mean like two-story high robots. Robots. Think about it, like two to three story high robots making music all controlled by some guy with his iPad on the stage? That shit would be amazing! Or it would result in something really bad happening, which, hey, that's also freaking awesome. So there you go, first step is small robots making us music, next step, giant robots making awesome music and possibly fighting, maybe both at like the same time. Yes! Giant robot music battle to the death! Okay, continuing to talk about robots here because who doesn't love robots? Luddites! That's who. Damn, people always get in the way of progress. Well, anyway, the next story involves one of those awesome quadricopters, which I've talked about in the past, but this time it's getting struck by lightning! And the cool part, it still actually flies. Check it out. So the quadricopter is located inside of a metal cage type of thing, and then it flies between two large Tesla coils, which, if you didn't already know, are capable of storing vast amounts of electricity and then discharging it. Well, this time when they discharge it, the electricity is going straight into our flying little friend there. So you may be wondering, Curtis, why is the quadricopter's electronics not getting fried by the massive electricity passing through it? Well, random viewer, I will tell you. It's because because the metal cage around it actually protects the quadricopter. The electricity simply moves around the helicopter and discharges to the ground below. It's a pretty cool example of how electricity works, just to let you know. And more technology news here, and you know I love technology, and you know I love like wearable technology, because I have like, I have a pebble on this hand and I got a Nike fuel band on this one. But this next story is all about technology being implanted and fused with the human body. Now, I for one am a big supporter of this type of tech, but at the same time, I hate operations and more or less hospitals. So I have a feeling that it would be very hard for me to get like an implant like this installed in my arm. But that's just me. This Bluetooth enabled microchip is actually able to track the different levels of glucose and cholesterol inside of your bloodstream. Think of this like a permanent implantable version of something like my Nike fuel band. So if you see this and you're like, I totally want that installed in my arm right now, well, sorry, you actually have to wait because it's still in development slash testing, and in the end, it's hoped that something like this could be installed on people who need regular blood tests. Instead of always going to the hospital to get your blood checked, this Bluetooth microchip could sync with your smartphone and simply display the information for you and also, which is really cool, send a copy to your doctor. It's an interesting idea, and I personally think it'd be great to be able to track the many things going on in my body. But of course, at the same time, I really don't want to be cut open for this thing to be installed. If someone can find a way for me to like take it in a pill form, totally sold, we'll buy it now. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's official. We have left the solar system. Or well, something we built has. Today, for the very first time, a man-made object has reached the Cosmo Abyss beyond the farthest reaches of our solar system. The Voyager 1 is the first spacecraft to leave our solar system, launched back on September 5th, 1977. This spacecraft, which kinda looks like a satellite, has been blazing towards the edge of our solar system at a speed of 10.72 miles per second which just happens to be faster than any other man-made object to date. In its history, Voyager passed Jupiter in 1979 and Saturn just one year later. And in a mere 40,000 years, Voyager will pass the planet Galice 445, but unfortunately we won't be able to hear about it because, well, let's face the fact, we're all gonna be dead 
and because in 2020 the Voyager sensors will begin to go offline, and by 2030 the power will be too low for the spacecraft and it will cease to operate. But even after Voyager dies, it will still be sailing through space, and maybe someday far from now either our civilization or another one far out in space will come across it, and just thinking about that is freaking cool. <laughs> Last year I have a quick topic for all of you, it's not surprising but a new survey out has revealed that the TV in the bedroom may no longer be necessary. Motorola surveyed 9,500 people in 17 countries around the world and found that more and more people are consuming content in different ways in the bedroom. Of those surveyed, 46% said that they watched on their smartphones and 41% said that they watched on their tablet. That's compared to 36% who watched on their TV just a few years ago. Now when I think about all this personally, I have a TV in my bedroom but I never freaking use it. It just kind of sits there, takes up space, you know, looks kind of nice. I'd much rather or watch something on my iPad than the TV. So I just thought this would be a great question for all of you. How do you watch content in bed? And I don't want to know what content. You can keep that to yourself, please and thank you. Just tell me if you watch it on like a TV, a tablet, a smartphone, or something else. You can let me know in the comments section below, or of course, you can always let me know on my Facebook page, through Twitter, or on Google+. Links to all that and the other topics I talked about in today's episode in the description below, along with the always amazing subscribe button. So until next time, I'm Curtis Parody, and that's what's happening now. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video today. You can of course check out more videos I create by clicking on them below. Check out now for the latest news happening in the world right now, Paradise Gaming for some fun gameplay videos, or of course my personal vlog channel to see what I'm like outside of my studio. Also, if you're interested in supporting the show and getting some new clothes for yourself, check out the store at thecurtisparitystore.ca. See you guys later.